I, I mean, I, I don't care what the results are. I care what, the, what amount of work you're putting in, but I don't care what the results are. Could care less what the results are. Um, you know, I couldn't go back and, you know, get a bunch of old expireds with the click of a mouse. I couldn't dial 100 numbers an hour, okay? Um, you guys have an incredible, incredible opportunity um, right now. New agents have it absolutely made. New agents have it absolutely made. And we'll, I'll touch on that in a minute when I'm talking about setting expectations, all right? Now, who's excited and ready to put in the work? Say aye. Aye. All right. Let's touch on personal branding. Branding, really, but personal branding, really. Because this business, it's not about your, it's about you as the agent. It's not really your company, your brokerage, right? Your brokerage, you know, when you really break it down, us agents, we're, we're the customers of the brokerage, not our clients. Our clients are our customers. <laughs> we're the brand for our customers, and then we're the customers for the agencies, right? The agency just puts their name at the top of the contract. They don't negotiate, they don't price, they don't show property, they do nothing. Their name's just at the top of the contract and they don't even do that. We do that for them. All we do is give them money at the end of the deal. I don't, it doesn't matter what the color of the logo is on the email. What matters is that it went, it, it, it's your character. Right? It's your character traits. It's what they see as a pattern in you as a person. And really think about this, and you can write this one down, that your personal brand is not a logo. It's who you are. When people think about your name, they're thinking about who you are, the person. You are the personality. Who you are is the hard worker. Who you are is always taking care of them. That's what they're thinking about, and that's brand. And the only way to create that brand is by getting out there and being yourself, getting out there and being who you are and showing people who you are, right? The problem is people create the logo, you know, and then this is the brand. And then now they're pushing it out in their marketing. But the, brand, the, the marketing isn't really showing them who they are, number one. And number two, to show People in your market, your local market, who you are and build that brand takes a lot of time. When you really break it down, I'm sure you'll even agree. It doesn't matter where you get your leads from, we have to talk to them. We have to end up talking to people. So I realized that early on. So that was my thing. <laughs> I'm just gonna look up, this is how you look up numbers. I'm just gonna do this all night so that I can call them all day the next day. I did that for years and I was by myself in my office grinding. That's the way you guys gotta, gotta think, but here's the thing. You don't have to do that <laughs> with the technology we have in nowadays. You guys can take what took me 15 years. I made 100,000 calls in 15 years with my hand, looking them up by hand, one at a time, copying and pasting their addresses in these different websites. You guys can call 100,000 numbers in two, three, four years. You can do it in the same, you can do what took me 15 years in two or three, four years. And literally be where I am right now. You can hit 100 deals a year within the next three or four years if you put that work in. It's right there in front of you, right? So what's stopping you from doing it? That's the question you gotta ask yourself. Why am I not doing this? Where do I begin with this? People set these expectations that are so unrealistic and then become so incredibly disappointed uh, when they don't hit these crazy goals. And it, it, it's a very dangerous game to play. They're comparing their self to other people. And they're saying, well, Ricky's doing 100 deals a year, so I'm gonna set my goal for 100 deals a year. It makes zero sense. I'm not saying don't go for the 100 deals a year. I'm saying don't compare yourself to me. A, and B, when we're new, when we're brand new into the business, we don't know what goals to set for ourselves. Because we don't know, 
I was talking to an agent last week, incredibly disappointed, frustrated individual who in his first year, he's about to clock out at $35,000. And I said, bro, I made $20,000 my first year. You almost doubled my first year volume. You just pulled that number out of nowhere and said, I'm going to hit this. And if I don't, then I'm going to be mad. That's what people are doing. That's what people are doing. We have to set, I'm not saying downgrade our expectations, go for the moon. But what I'm saying is, is when we set out to, to do whatever we're going to accomplish, this one should focus on. I want you to focus on the actual actions that you're taking on a daily and weekly basis. I'm going to do this many hours of that. I'm going to do this many hours of this. I'm going to put this in place. Right. And then whatever I'm going to shoot 450,000. But if I give it everything I got every day and all I make is 35, I'm going to be I'm going to be cool with that. That's when you start winning. When you're not worried about the end result and, it, and you're not so tied to it, you're putting too much weight on it. You guys are putting too much weight on the end result and not enough weight on the daily actions to maximize that, that end result. Your, your end result is, is going to be the highest if you give the highest amount of effort. So why are we even worried about what this is going to be? This is what we got to put in to, to make this as big as it's going to be. Listen, I want, I, want to see, I want to see a decade. What pace can you hold for 10 years? Not this year. I don't care what you do this year. I, I mean, I, I don't care what the results are. I care what, the, what amount of work you're putting in, but I don't care what the results are. Could care less what the results are. I want to see that you're taking the actions that you're supposed to take. That's what means something to me. When I'm evaluating your business, right? When I'm evaluating your business, I'm looking at pendings and listings and closed sales. That's half of it. But the other half is how many people are we talking to on a daily basis we never talked to before? And out of that, how many of those people are we connecting with? That's how I evaluate your business. That's how I can tell where you're going to be. I can tell where you're going to be based on what you're doing now if you continue to do these things, right? Please be careful with setting your expectations, setting your goals for the end of the year. I have a goal every year, make a million dollars in real estate, right? If I wake up December, I don't, if I wake up, I, that's, I don't care if I make it or not. I know that I'm doing everything I can do to make it, and if I don't hit it, that's fine. This was the maximum result that was going to be yielded from my maximum effort. When I'm saying you got 500 people there that might do business with you, refer people to you in that second year, and you're probably going to make 150. And then if you keep going and you take that to 1,000, that third year, you're probably going to pop 250 and have a lot of momentum, a lot of wind behind your sales. And you can keep building and building and building because when those people enter into your database, sure, they can click unsubscribe. Sure, they can have a bad experience with you and not want to deal with, do business with you anymore. You're going to lose people. This business is a business of filtering through the population and finding that concentrated group of people who want to do business with you, who love your content. If somebody unsubscribes, that's a good thing. I don't want to do weekly emails, man, it's too frequent. People are going to unsubscribe. Those people that unsubscribe from weekly, they're going to unsubscribe from monthly. They're going to, if you send them an email once a year, they're going to unsubscribe from it. They are unsubscribers. They don't even get email. It's not the weekly thing. You want the people who see the weekly thing and think, damn, this dude is getting it. You want those people. You don't want the people that don't subscribe. Great. Go to a real estate agent that's, that's on social media doing their thing, right? Or whatever you like. You're not going to please everyone. But I want to show my clients that I'm consistent. I want to show them that I'm hardworking and that I'm working behind the scenes to try to put them in the best position when they get ready to buy or sell. In Miami, I asked the entire audience to answer this question. And I'll ask you guys, and I'm open for any debates. Okay? And I've asked hundreds of thousands of agents this question. I've yet to get a debater. But don't be scared. 
If you, have, if you do have a, a side, I want to hear it. But I want, I would love to hear a strategy better than this, okay? Instead of doing all the lead generation things that all just filters right back to the same action, which is a conversation with someone, why wouldn't I, instead of doing all that, spending all that time, money, and energy on that, why wouldn't I just get the exact property owner's information for two cents that I want to do business with, call them not to sell them, but just to make friends, followed by a weekly email on the same day of the week forever? Can anyone tell me anything that's more efficient, cost efficient, productive, scalable? This dude is jacked, y'all. No, no. Hey, so just one, one question on that. Actually, if, if I was going to set up like, let's say a three hour call block a day, I know you kind of built your business on circle prospecting. I've got expires for sell by owners, old expires, and then, um, you know, the circle prospecting. If you had a three hour block a day that you're making calls, say from eight to 11, how would you, how would you break that up as far as your block, your time I'll, block? On the type of leads I'm calling? Yeah. I would do one day expires, one day for sale by owners. I would do it by okay. days. Got it. I would diversify by days. Yeah. Okay, going once, going twice. I said the same thing to 800 agents in Miami one person was like, Grr. and I was like, do what? <laughs> you trying to say something? And she was like, door knocking. And I was like, well, okay. And I should have said, tell me more why you think that's better. But instead I just said, well, you know, I can sit down in one spot and make a hundred dials in an hour versus, you know, walking around and calling and, and knocking on doors, uh, much more efficient. Okay, um, my point is this. If you guys can't tell me a better strategy than what I just said, then why aren't every single one of you doing it? Good, there you go. can you hear me? Yep. I'm in an inter interesting market. I'm down in Southern Utah and, and I, I'm, I'm a newer agent. I'm coming out of the corporate world and I've met a lot of people don't think very highly of real estate agents okay. in my market. Yeah. What, what would you say are the one or two things that you, you can do as an agent mm -hmm. who's, who's applying this philosophy of, uh, you know, just, hey, hey I, wanna, I wanna get to know you, I wanna be a friend, yeah. but you from the get-go hate me because I'm a real estate agent yeah. or think I'm a, I'm a sleazy slime ball because I'm a real estate agent. No, 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 it, the, the thing is is that that scenario is really great for you because they have this bad impression of real estate agents and now here you have the opportunity to, that gives you, like, you can stand out so much more now. Because if everybody was, was like me and you, then it would be hard to stand out because everybody's just so nice and not trying to sell us or anything. But the fact that we're the only one <laughs> in this person's mind that actually cares and wants to help, right? So, so when you do use my philosophy and you approach them in a manner of, listen, you know, I'm not trying to sell your house. I just want to know what I can do for you now or later. I'd love the opportunity to work with you whenever you decide to do something. Because here's the fact, they need a real estate agent. They're going to need a real estate agent. They're going to have to use a real estate agent. You know, they don't have to. There's a percentage that does for sale by owner. There's a percentage that, but chances are, they're going to need a real estate agent to help them through that transaction, to help negotiate, to help all the stuff I talked about in the beginning of the, of the speech. So. It, this gives you an opportunity to really, now, now, like, this makes it like a cakewalk in that scenario. Because if they already have this bad impression and then you come to them and say, listen, I'm not like that though. I'm not even trying to sell you. This is what I'm trying to do. This is how I operate. Let me, let, give me a chance. Let me send you a weekly email and we'll go from there. If you don't like me, fine. I'll go find somebody that wants a hard worker. I'll go find somebody who wants an honest agent that's looking out for them, that wants the best for them. If you don't want all those things, then I'll find somebody else who does, right?